U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report features as special guest Monsignor Dan Cooper of Wahoo, Nebraska, who is vice president of the National Catholic Rural Life Conference of the entire nation. Here to visit with Monsignor Cooper is Ken Stofferin, director of the NFO Field Staff Department. Well, Monsignor Cooper, it's a pleasure to have you on U.S. Farm Reports today as a special guest. And I know that you're vice president of the National Catholic Real Life Conference with headquarters in Des Moines. And I know that you work with rural people a lot. And I think and I'm sure that our listening audience today would be very much interested in knowing some about your agricultural background and uh, your interest and uh, some of your background dealing with farm problems and farm people. Could you tell us something about this? Yes, <clears throat> Ken, I would be very happy to. Um, uh, I was born in Story County, uh, Ames, Iowa, about four miles west of uh, the college, uh, 1904. I lived there for probably uh, four, 13, 14 years and then we moved um, further, uh, closer to Boone, Iowa. Uh, and all of these years, uh, I became very interested in 4-H. My for first um, product was an acre of corn. Uh, of course, born and reared on a farm, uh, my love for the farm uh, has grown each additional year of my life. Uh, I continue encouraging 4-H uh, work wherever I go. Also, water and soil conservation. Um, I uh, was out of, I graduated from high school in, in uh, Napier Consolidated High School in 1923. Uh, at that time, I had been specializing in uh, five different breeds of hogs. And uh, I had planned to uh, continue going on into um, raising of hogs and farming until uh, my father, after my graduation of high school, stopped me and asked me what I planned to do in the future. And I told him what I, my plan was. And so he discouraged it because farming didn't look so good then. And that was back in 1923. Do you remember anything uh, of importance at that time? No, I don't believe I can remember anything about the year of 1923, but I have often heard of it, uh, the period of time between uh, 21 and 23, as far as agriculture was concerned. And, of course, this was the year of the passage of the Capra-Volstead Act, of course, which the National Farmers Organization is authorized under. And I would imagine that the year 22 and 23 in there were very significant years. Uh, as far as agriculture were concerned with the passage of this act. Now, you mentioned that uh, you have quite an agricultural background, uh, being a farm boy, and uh, leadership in 4-H, and also in uh, hog breeding, and uh, husbandry work in, uh, in animals. And you also, I believe you told me that you were also a herdsman at one time. Yes. Uh, I had an uncle that was a, a shorthorn cattle breeder, and I became his top-notch uh, herdsman at that time, showing his cattle at the county and state and district fairs, and then also a man by the name of Mr. Billy Barr from Ames, Iowa, a great uh, cattle uh, man. He had shorthorn cattle, so I learned a lot about thoroughbred uh, livestock then. And then, at the same time, uh, Ken, I had the uh, invitation to uh, join a, uh, an auctioneering company named uh, Joy and Hunter. So uh, when I joined it, uh, we, uh, it was Joy, Hunter, and Cooper auctioneering company. Uh, that lasted a few years. Uh, it was, we sold uh, an auction only at uh, thoroughbred uh, livestock, hog and cattle sales. So I had a little taste of that at that time too. Uh, there's, um, right now, I would like to say, uh, Ken, 
My visit here today uh, has uh, been an inspirational one. When I came into uh, the, uh, in the new entrance you have here of your national headquarters, I was very uh, edified and inspired to see the, the renovation of your headquarters offices here. And then the, the uh, tour that I had uh, by your various personnel, it really is an inspiration for anyone. And uh, I've often said in my uh, work now, uh, out in my work in Nebraska and other states, that if people would only come to your headquarters here, they certainly would uh, get a, uh, an education on uh, your program. Uh, there is, uh, I'd like to, uh, since our time is rather short, uh, Ken, I'd like to mention a story that I often tell when I'm talking to groups, and it's called a, uh, uh, a golf story, and it runs like this, you know, when you begin to play golf, you call it golf dub. Well, this man hit the ball, he kept trying to hit the ball, but he kept missing it, and finally he did hit it, but he knocked it off over into the rough, uh, with trees and shrubbery and grass and ant hills, and he got over the fence and was trying to hit that ball, but he was missing it all the time, so finally one of the ants said to the other ants, listen guys, if we don't want to get hit, we'd better get on the ball. So I think that's true with our farmers uh, of today. If they don't want to get hit, and get hit clear off of the farm, they'd better get on the ball and uh, find out where they stand. This is true. This is exactly what the NFO is doing, is providing the leadership for agriculture for farmers to get on that ball. And uh, with your visit here at our national headquarters, and you expressed the difference from the first time that you came in the door, we have had some terrific expansion. And not only do you see a tremendous expansion here at the national headquarters, but this all comes about as as we go through the expansion of the organization through the entire country and through the years of organizational work we've now expanded to 40 states in the nation from coast to coast from maine to california and from the state of washington to the state of florida and from north dakota down to the gulf of mexico so it does take quite a staff here at the national headquarters, and it does take quite a staff of people out in the field to build the terrific organization that we have. And, uh, of course, it takes a lot of coordination to complete the objectives that we started out to do in coast-to-coast -coast bargaining the NFO way. Now, also, I'd like to find out some more about your background. Uh, you did have some experience in soil conservation work. You know, you have a great love for the soil, and I would imagine that this uh, had a lot to do with your working in this particular part of that <coughs> That's program. right, Ken. Um, from where we lived, we were about four miles west of the uh, state, Iowa State College, and every uh, spring we would have uh, rainfalls and floods down that uh, river between the college and downtown Ames. And uh, my father used to always bring us down. We didn't have an automobile then, but he would drive us down to where we could see the uh, overflowing of this river and the flood and area uh, with uh, dead livestock and even some livestock floating on this uh, water that wasn't even dead yet with all of the other debris. Well, this left a lifetime impression upon me and I kept thinking to myself, what could I do uh, uh, when I grew up or got older to prevent this disaster? And that's why I, um, I got wrapped up in and get, became interested in the Water and Soil Conservation Program, of which I am now a member of the State Committee in Nebraska. And I love that work very much. In fact, the little uh, parish where I was located for 18 uh, years, uh, I was up around Bellwood, Nebraska, 55 miles northwest of uh, Lincoln, we had 10 floods uh, in that uh, valley there in one summer. And, and uh, this destroyed all of the good work that I was doing on our grounds around there. So I was glad to uh, get some movement started then on water and soil conservation, and we did. Well, certainly the importance of soil conservation work 
it cannot be expressed uh, too greatly because anything that we can do uh, as a nation and as I'm sure the importance of the work you do and your interest in the soil conservation work is only going to serve to strengthen us as an entire nation and as an entire people. Well, Monsignor Cooper, you've told us something about your agriculture background and your farm background, and you're vice president of the National Catholic Rural Life Conference out of Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm sure our listening audience would like to know something about the objectives and the goals of, of the Catholic Rural Life Conference. Well, Ken, I'm certainly happy to tell you a little bit about uh, that program. The uh, National Catholic Rural Life Conference really started in about uh, 1950. Five, I believe it was, around uh, Granger, Iowa, which is south of uh, Des Moines. And as a high school student, I used to go down there quite a bit and visit with Monsignor Lagudi, who played such a very active part in this uh, rural life conference work. Uh, today, um, uh, Bishop Seneca is the president of the rural life conference uh, from Onsboro, um, uh, Kentucky. And then uh, the, the uh, national director is Monsignor Edward O'Rourke, uh, who is stationed right at the headquarters in Des Moines, and the national executive secretary is Monsignor Weber. So they, all three of those uh, people, make up my uh, bosses. So I have to be careful what I say. I've got to stay in line with them. But that isn't hard to do, because we get together quite often on our executive meetings and on our conventions. The um, big thought uh, about this uh, rural life work is um, uh, I'm primarily, uh, I'm interested, of course, in all people uh, because I love all people. But be, having been born on a farm, uh, I have a great love for the farm people and uh, the, uh, ag the profession of agriculture, my great love for livestock. Uh, because when I look at livestock, uh, I cannot help but think of the hand of God. Uh, he did a wonderful job on livestock. And then uh, you look at uh, man, and you can see, again, the great job he did on man. And I think he did a good job on you, Ken, by the way. Oh, thank you. Your wife knew what she was doing when she <laughs> married you, I would say. But uh, here's a little thought I'd like to um, uh, put forth uh, in this real life program. Uh, uh, Ken, and that is, uh, we try to bring Christ to the country and the country to Christ. That uh, sums up quite a bit of what our program is. And uh, this uh, rural uh, farm problem that we have right now, this farm crisis as I call it, I don't like to hear people say that it's just a farm problem. I uh, disagree there. I would like to call it our problem because uh, agriculture is the basic industry, uh, in my thinking, of all industries, uh, because it deals with the most important product, and that is food. Uh, if any uh, army wants to uh, win a battle, they cut off the supply of food from their enemy, don't they? Yes, sounds and, reasonable. Yes, and if they cut off the food, they can win that battle. So uh, agriculture is uh, very important. And um, with this problem that we have in agriculture, uh, I think we should call it everybody's problem because uh, uh, we're all involved. After all, aren't we all uh, members of one uh, big family of gods? God is the uh, creator of the whole world and all people, so we are all brothers and sisters uh, uh, of God's big family. So what is your problem uh, in agriculture or another man's problem in, uh, in some industry, uh, in labor, whatever it might be? That's my problem, too. If uh, you rejoice, I should rejoice. And if you weep, uh, I should weep. To me, that uh, uh, tells us that we should have more love for one another. Uh, the, uh, one of the things that we are stressing now uh, in our rural life uh, program is um, uh, rural life workshops. We try to bring in the clergy. Now, our good bishop, Bishop Flavin of Lincoln, Nebraska, has granted permission for us to have a, a diocesan-wide clergy workshop 
where we invite in uh, economists from the Agricultural College uh, to um, talk on the um, agricultural economic uh, conditions of today. And then we also have um, uh, outstanding lay men and women join us. And we invite all known Catholic clergy and even Jewish uh, clergy to join us uh, in these conferences. And it's from uh, these uh, workshops that uh, this education goes out then into the areas uh, that were it needed most, I think. So I like to encourage uh, clergy workshops. I think our clergy should be brought more up to date with the problems of today. Uh, or am I right on that score, Ken? Yes, you are very much right, because I know the great program that we're in, in in the National Farmers Organization, and we've had a great deal of pleasure with working with the National Catholic Real Life Conference and all clergy of all faiths. And it's really a schoolmaster's job. Yes, uh, another thing I like about your, uh, the, the National Farmers Organization, Ken, is that when you go to one of their meetings, and by the way, uh, if you ever want to get a group of people together, all you have to do, uh, it seems, in, uh, anywhere in the United States today, is uh, to have a uh, NFO uh, sausage feed or a pancake supper, and boy, you really get a, a crowd. Uh, and uh, another thing that I like about uh, these uh, NFO meetings, and I attend many of them because I love the atmosphere, the jolly uh, atmosphere that the people have, uh, they, and they're very sincere. And it, uh, you don't know what nationality anybody is or what their creed is or what their um, politics uh, are. Uh, you're just, they're all there for a common good. And you can see that uh, sincere expression on their faces, that they're there for a purpose. Just like it was down in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'll never forget that trip down there. Uh, that was one of the highlights of my life, those five days that I spent at uh, the Louisville, Kentucky Convention. This always is a marvel of many observers, at especially our national conventions because there you will see anywhere from probably 12,000 voting delegates plus all the visitors there and uh, on all occasions and talking to the observers who are not farmers but interested. Uh, they will say that this is the first group of people this size of the convention that I've ever seen that come here to conduct themselves in a business-like manner and there for one purpose, to take care of the organization's business for another year. I remember of him appearing on the program <coughs> at that time. I was quite impressed with his enthusiasm. He uh, said, we're going to send all of our policemen and guards home because we just don't need them. And after observing the delegates that were there, he said, uh, we could see that uh, there was no use for these men. So. Uh, because he said he never saw such a peaceful group of uh, convention uh, candidates in his life while they'd had that uh, auditorium in, uh, in existence. Uh, Ken, there's uh, another problem that I have, um, and that is I'm worried about the factory farms taking over uh, the family uh, size farms. This, I imagine, would be a part of your interest in rural America and dealing along with uh, and part of your National Catholic Rural Life Conference work. And uh, I know that the agriculture problem, which really amounts to a problem for all of our nation and has world implications as well because of an agriculture problem here in this country, because it's our biggest industry. And it's the only industry that is, remains depressed uh, economically. Now, I know that uh, you have expressed some grave concern about the world problems, and I think some of these are, are agriculturally implicated. And uh, with solving some agriculture problems, I, I believe that uh, you can solve a lot of these other problems in the world of starvation, hunger, and so on. Right. It seems very difficult for me uh, to think of uh, the starving millions of people in the world uh, and yet we are the most efficient industry of all industries, and uh, we yet these farmers of today are getting the least for their money of all industries. That's what bothers me very much, Ken. 
Well, Monsignor Cooper, the National Farmers Organization is involved in a gigantic campaign to solve the American farmer's problem by raising him in an economic class to levels of other segments in our society. Now, do you, in connection with the starvation problems in the whole country, and I know that the NFO is going to play, and is playing, a giant role in, in not only getting more money in the hands of farmers so that they can spend to keep the gear wheels of the economy running. What do you think this is going to play in the role of starvation and providing enough uh, grease in the gear wheels so that we can distribute food in, in better proportions? Uh, Ken, I'm glad you asked that question because it concerns me very much. Uh, I feel very deeply uh, about this problem. Uh, I noticed uh, here, Ken, uh, a little flyer that I picked up in my visit at the uh, national headquarters of NFO. <clears throat> the little flyer, it says uh, the corn prices in the United States are down as low as $1.05. We're up in France, it, they're up to, uh, the price is up to $2.17 for corn. So uh, I think I'd rather live in France uh, than in the United States on that uh, basis. And on the other side of this little flyer, it says that uh, the price of wheat uh, in the United States is down to $1.25 a bushel, where in Finland it's up to $5.10 a bushel. <clears throat> this doesn't look good to me at all. <clears throat> <There's coughs> pardon me. There is just too much of a contrast there. Uh, Ken, uh, I feel deeply uh, about the NFO in this, that it's, it's, it's a powerful organization. And uh, as I've said to some of your staff members before, and I've been asked to talk to many groups, and I'm glad to do so when I have the time, uh, as a, uh, a rural life uh, booster, I, uh, I, when I talk with these groups, many of them are members of NFO and many of them are not. Sometimes they ask me uh, about what do I think of the NFO. Well, I have often told them this, that uh, if uh, they don't uh, like the NFO, uh, why don't they look into it and make an investigation? And I urge them to come to the national headquarters here in Corning. And uh, I say, if you investigate it, I think you will feel like I do. You will want to join the NFO. And uh, I, I'm very sincere about that. Uh, I, and here's another thing that I like to mention. Many times, I as a clergyman, I get some uh, pretty cold shoulders and uh, get some pretty harsh language used against me because of my interest in them. And uh, uh, I, I tell them that uh, when they have an opposition, I ask them, what is your, your problem? What is your opposition? What is your objection? And when they mention this objection, I say, well, have you read the Constitution or the bylaws? And they say, no, I haven't. Well, then I tell them, well, then your argument doesn't hold any weight as far as I'm concerned. And uh, then, uh, too, uh, I say, have you ever been over to the headquarters? And usually they say no. And uh, to me, that means something. Uh, here, uh, Ken, I'd like to mention a little story that I often use um, because of the uh, fact that we need some uh, more honesty in our world, uh, dealing with one another. The little story called the father and son. The father, uh, we used to take his son out every night when the corn was ready to be picked. In the moonlight, uh, he would uh, cross over into his neighbor's cornfield because his crop was better. And he would uh, fill the sacks with the neighbor's corn, and the little boy and he would carry the sacks back and forth over to his field. There was no fence there, so it was easy to cross over from his field to the other field. After several of these trips, this little boy uh, finally uh, saw Dad looking this way and that way, and finally the little boy said, Say, Dad, you forgot to look up which to me stresses the fact that, uh, you know, God has something to say about this. Very so. significant. Uh, Monsignor, I'm going to ask you this question. I know you deal with uh, rural people a lot. Uh, and I know that uh, if you didn't have some real deep feelings about 
rural people and agriculture, uh, you probably wouldn't be working with them. But why do you feel that there is really a problem in agriculture today? Well, in the first place, Ken, I say that, uh, and I feel that uh, agriculture is definitely our greatest industry. And since it is the greatest industry, it's bound to have uh, uh, the greatest number of opposition or enemies. And I'm convinced in my own mind, uh, and someone will have to disprove this if I'm, uh, point if I'm wrong, the fact that um, uh, the opposition to agriculture, and there definitely is uh, an evil force working against agriculture. I'm convinced of that. Uh, the powers that are against agriculture are doing their very best, and they are hiring some of the most intelligent minds that they can possibly get to help them drive the farmer off the, the land. And I, I fear this. Uh, I fear losing possession of the land. We hope to keep the families on the land as long as we possibly can. Uh, one of the best ways to raise your family, and you know that yourself from having been a farmer, the father and the mother and the children all work together as a team. And the child learns and observes his father and mother all the time while they're working there. To me, it's a real way of life, Ken, and I love it very much. Well, Monsignor, uh, and along with this, what do you think is the solution to the farm problem that we know? Well, uh, one word would really sum that up in my mind, Ken, and that is the word uh, of love. L-O-V-E is a pretty big word. And it's the greatest virtue uh, of all virtues in my books. Uh, I asked a chaplain from Vietnam one time when he was telling about the tragedies uh, happening there. And I uh, asked him how he would sum up, what would, how would you solve this whole problem? And he said the same thing. He said, there's one word would, would answer your question. That is the word of love. But it's that word of love, it's got to start with me. And it's got to go clear around the world. Um, and I, too, uh, I, I stress that very much, uh, Ken. I tell people that I've got to conduct myself in, in dealing with my fellow man in such a way that they can see the image of Christ in me and uh, that I can see the image of Christ in them. And I tell them, too, that uh, we should not forget, just like today, you, uh, Ken, and I are on this television uh, program uh, as we are on this television program, we're on another television program all the time. And that's God's television camera. Do you agree with me there, Ken? I sure do. Do you like that idea? I sure do. I like it very much. Well, I know that the NFO can be the instrument to bring people together to solve this program problem that we have. And it's been a real pleasure in having you on our program as a special guest in the U.S. Farm Reports. Well, I certainly have enjoyed it too, Ken. Thank you. U.S. Farm Report has presented a visit with Monsignor Dan Cooper, Vice President of the National Catholic Rural Life Conference of the Whole Nation, and Ken Stofferin, Director of the NFO Field Staff Department. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at the same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of agricultural producers. <laughs>